Over the last two years, I've made over a million dollars traveling around the world, playing the best golf courses in the world, drinking the best cocktails in the world, and reviewing some of the coolest golf products out there. That is not hyperbole. I'm not saying that to brag. I'm only saying this because I think the very best business to start in 2024 is a niche site. It's a niche review website and YouTube channel. Those two things go hand in hand. If you're looking for a business that has significant financial upside, passive income, the ability to stop trading time for dollars, as well as the ability to spend more time just doing the stuff you love, then this is the business to create. And in today's video, I'm going to walk you through step-by-step -step everything you need to know to build a six-figure affiliate brand in 2024. To be clear, this is not easy. This is going to take a lot of work. But what I can promise you is these efforts are gonna start paying off sooner rather than later. You're gonna have a lot more fun doing this than you are with most other online business models. And this is opening up something that's going to give you the keys to the castle to whichever industry and niche you want. I can't tell you how many opportunities have opened up to me in the golf world, in the cocktail world, in the travel and entrepreneurship world because of the niche brands I have started. But if that sounds like you, then watch today's video. It might be a little bit long, but I promise you, if you implement this stuff and you get serious about it, your life is going to change in ways you never thought possible. It certainly has for mine. One quick plug, if everything I talk about in today's video resonates with you and you want more help and more hand-holding and more mentoring, we have an entire course dedicated to how to do this process within Location Rebel Academy. It's called Make Money Blogging, and it's one of the very best courses I've ever created. So I'll link to that below so you can go check it out. But right now, I just want to make this the absolute most useful video you will watch this year. Before we go into the steps, I want to make it crystal clear what we are trying to accomplish and exactly the type of business I am proposing you start. That is an affiliate review brand. You are going to choose a niche around a topic that you either have expertise in or would like to develop expertise in. And most of your content is going to be around doing reviews of these products. Later on in the video, I'm going to talk about the very specific types of content you need to do in order to rank in Google, in order to get seen on YouTube, and in order to get this thing off the ground. But if you're not into doing product reviews, then this might not be the best strategy for you. The reason product reviews are so important is because of affiliate marketing. You get a special link, people click the link, they buy the product, you get a commission. That's why the review aspect is so important because you want to be targeting people who are looking to buy and looking to spend money. That is how you are going to make this six-figure income that I'm talking about. The second thing is you can do this successfully just on YouTube. You can do it successfully just on a blog. But if you can create high-quality content both via video and via a website and written content, you are doing something very few people do, and that's what's gonna set you apart. That's what's going to allow you to build trust. That's what's gonna allow you to build authority. That's what's gonna help you beat all the other people that are just using AI out there. That is why this is such a special opportunity in 2024, but it's also a fair amount of work, and that's the reason most people aren't going to do it, which is why there's an opportunity for you. So if that's all clear and that makes sense, let's jump into the steps right now so we can get going with this. All right, step number one. This is one of the most important things you're going to need to do, and that is to choose a niche. With freelance writers that I help, I tell them, your niche doesn't matter at first. You can work as a generalist. With an affiliate review site, you have to have a niche. You have to establish yourself as an expert around a specific topic. So the way I generally do this is the NWN method niche within a niche or niche within a niche. I know people are going to yell at me no matter which way I say that word, so just get over it. So here's what you do. Let's use my golf site as an example. Golf is an industry. Golf travel, golf instruction, golf products, golf reviews, those are all niches. You want to find a niche within a niche. So you've got golf, you've got golf reviews, you've got golf rangefinder reviews. And what you want to do when you are first starting out is you want to figure out what that niche within a niche is. You want to get really specific and you want to become an expert on that specific thing. But here's the kicker. You don't want your entire brand to be so specific that you're pigeonholed into that one thing. You want to basically be able to create content around that niche within a niche and then also create content around another one and another one. But what you want to do is you want to establish yourself as an expert in the first one before you go any further. So in my case, I started with golf rangefinders. I have now reviewed over three dozen golf rangefinders. I've compared all the competing products. I've got dedicated reviews for all of them. One of the highest traffic posts on my site is best golf rangefinders. 
And the reason that ranks so well is because Google and YouTube can see, oh, you've reviewed every single one of these. So you actually know what the pros and the cons are. You've been hands on with this. So as you're thinking about where to go in your world, think about what industry you want to get started in. What are you excited about? Where is there a ton of potential? What niche do you then want to specialize in? So for me, it was golf product reviews and golf travel. So I talk about a lot of different types of products and I talk about a lot of different types of golf courses. But getting going, I focus specifically on golf rangefinders so I can establish myself as an expert there. That's not to say while you're doing that, you can't create other types of content as well. You can and you should, but that's going to be the focus. So figure out your industry, figure out your niche, and then figure out how you're going to get started within your niche within a niche. And that's part of the secret sauce to developing a new brand and building your authority quickly, which is going to lead to affiliate sales. Hey, real quick, I just want to let you know, if you watch the end of this video, I'm going to share with you exactly the type of products I look for to review on my sites, how to get products for review when you're just getting going, and exactly how how much money you can expect to make from different types of affiliate products. So I know those are some of the most common questions. So as you're going through this, just remember, keep watching to the end so that you can get that data. I think it's going to be really helpful as you are growing your business. All right, step number two, before we start creating any content, we want to make sure that we can make some money off the content we're creating. So you're going to want to research affiliate programs within your industry. So there's a few ways you can get going with that. If you have specific products in mind, you can just Google product name affiliate program and see what comes up. You can go to company websites and scroll down to the footer and see if they have a page for affiliates. You can also go to other review websites and other review YouTube channels and see if they have affiliate links for their products. If you can't tell and you click it and you go to the company's website, after the URL, if there's a whole bunch of extra parameters, especially anything that says AFFID or anything like that, it's probably an affiliate link. So just knowing what affiliate programs are out there, what products do they represent, that is a great way to get started because you wanna keep that in mind as you're creating your content. One other thing to keep in mind is Amazon has the biggest affiliate program in the world. So if you can buy that product on Amazon, then you will be able to get an affiliate link. On Amazon, you'll find that they pay a smaller commission, but because it gets so much volume and you get a commission on everything that somebody buys, so if they're going to click on golf clubs and they end up buying a new TV as well, then you're gonna get a commission on all of that. So Amazon is one of the easiest ways to get going. Step number three, you're gonna sit down and you're gonna come up with 100 content ideas. That may seem like a lot, but if you can only come up with like a dozen ideas for a blog post or a video, you're just not going to have enough content to build an entire brand around this. So you should have no shortage of ideas. You should be so overwhelmed with the sheer amount of content ideas that you can put out there that you can't help but just get excited to start working on these. But let me give you a little bit more direction. When you're coming up with your content ideas, not all content is created equally. There are certain types of content that people are just going to gravitate more towards others and make them more clickable. So a lot of your content should revolve around these types of posts. So here are some of my favorites. First off, product review. Product name, review, catchy headline. That's my formula. Because you're doing an affiliate review site, a lot of your content is simply going to be product reviews. So you want to make that very clear. So list out as many different products in your industry you could see yourself doing a review for. Another one is product comparisons. Going back to my example, let's say I'm reviewing golf simulators and there's two that are $1,000 a piece. Well, if someone's looking at one, then there's a good chance they're also looking for information on that other one because they're the same price and they essentially do the same thing. So by doing an in-depth comparison where you weigh the pros and cons and you give your opinions honestly, that is going to be super useful for someone that's looking to buy one of those products. And if you do it right, it doesn't matter which product they buy because you're gonna get a commission on either one of them. Another great type of content is how-to content. How to plan for a golf trip. So I might have a 3,000 word post and 15 minute long video all about how to plan for a golf trip. And in that, I might talk about some of the products that you need and include affiliate links to those products. One of my favorite types of content is best of. This works especially well once you've already reviewed a handful of products within a specific industry or within a specific niche. So best golf rangefinders, best golf simulators, best golf pants, best golf vests, best golf balls. You see where I'm going with this. And these become even more effective when you can link to your reviews of each individual product, both in the eyes of your readers, but more importantly, in the eyes of Google. It is smart enough to know that you have done reviews around all of those products. So the more you can do that, the more they're gonna look at it and say, oh, this person is an expert on this topic. And finally, one of the last types of content you should brainstorm is personal content. 
personal stories, things that are going to get people invested in you. So for me, it might be around my quest, my bucket list on Location Rebel, my quest to play the top 100 golf courses in the world, which I just passed the halfway mark, my quest to go to the top 100 bars in the world on Slightly Pretentious. Those are all personal. They're interesting. Those are things that are going to get people excited to subscribe and follow along with my journey on top of all the other reviews. So think about some of the interesting things you're doing, whether it's on the website or in your personal life, that is related to your content that you can put out there as well. And finally, the last type of content is list posts. Everybody loves lists. 10 ways to blank, 10 reasons to this, 10 questions to ask before you join a country club. Whatever it is, people like numbers, those are clickable titles, and if you can work your affiliate content into those, all the better. So those are some of my favorite types of content. Use those as templates as you're creating your content brainstorm, but do not skip this part. The last thing you wanna do is do all this extra work, get three months into it and realize, oh, oh, I'm out of ideas. That sucks. Trust me, it's time well spent. Step number four, time to get the website going. Do not stress too much about your name. The only thing I would make sure is that you keep it general enough so that you can expand as things grow. So for this type of business we're talking about, I personally wouldn't do golfrangefinderreviews.com, although if that's all you wanna do, that could be a great business. But because I would get bored doing that, I wanna be able to expand out in the future. I wanna be able to talk about travel. I wanna be able to talk about different types of products and different industries. And so by using, in my case, breaking 80, which is just kind of a general golf term, it gives me the flexibility down the line to not pigeonhole myself. So what you wanna do, buy a domain, get a hosting account, install WordPress. 100% I think WordPress is the way to go. It's gonna give you a lot more flexibility and a lot more SEO prowess than something like Squarespace. And you're gonna be able to find a theme that essentially makes the site look however you want it to look. So buy that domain, get hosting. For a site like this where you're hoping to get significant traffic, I recommend WP Engine. If you're just gonna go in with like a freelance writing website in your portfolio, Bluehost is a cheaper way to go. But for a site where you're hoping to get significant traffic, WP Engine is going to be more reliable and that's where I'm currently hosting all of my sites. Once you've bought your domain, you've got your hosting account, you've installed WordPress, go find a theme you like. You want to make sure it's responsive, which just means it's going to adjust the size based on if someone's on their computer or on their phone. Ideally, I would look for a magazine style theme. This is what's going to allow you to display lots of different articles and lots of different content around your site. And if it's got built-in product review capabilities, which allows you to assign scores to products and create categories, that's all the better. But this isn't something I would stress about because you can get a third-party plugin that can do that after the fact. I know that might seem like a lot, but it's actually relatively straightforward. I will link to our how to start a blog guide below that walks you through everything you need to know step by step. All right, step number five, once you've got your website set up, you've got all your content ideas, you're gonna to wanna to set up your YouTube channel. Now, I don't want you to stress out about this too much because here's the reality. If you're not used to talking to yourself on camera, you're gonna suck at first. It's going to take a while to get going. And so if you're really intimidated around the idea of putting yourself out there on video, don't worry. What you're gonna do is you're gonna set up your channel so it's there. You're gonna get your name, you're gonna get everything set up so it's ready to go when you are ready to start uploading videos. But if you wanna start with just the written content at first, that's great. But I wouldn't wait too long because video is kind of the secret sauce here. This is the thing that is going to set you apart from everyone else. This is the thing that's gonna help you build trust and authoritativeness. And most importantly, it's what's gonna help you beat a lot of the AI content that's out there that's mostly only going to be written these days. So set up your channel, get the basics of gear that you need. You can start shooting videos on your phone. You don't need a fancy camera. I would get one basic light. This can be a cheap $50 ring light that you get off Amazon. It doesn't have to be much. One area where I would consider spending a little bit of money is with audio. Bad audio is much worse than bad video. If a video sounds good but looks bad, chances are people will still watch it if they're interested in the content. But if the video looks great and the sound is all crackly and distorted, people aren't gonna listen to that and they're gonna go find something else. I've had really good luck with the DJI mic. It's super versatile. It comes with two microphones. So if you're doing an interview with an expert, you can each be mic'd up. It connects to a nicer camera. It connects to your phone. You can use it to record audio just on its own. Um, so I love it for all of those reasons. It is a little bit expensive. I think retail, it's around $300. So it's a bit of an investment. Don't worry about that if it's not your budget right now, but if you're looking for a high quality audio solution, that's one that I would recommend. One last thing I will say about video is even if you're reluctant to start posting right away, I think you should be practicing every day. Get in front of your camera and talk to it. Do those product reviews, even if you're not publishing them. The only way you're gonna get better is by doing it more and more. So build it into your daily routine to practice being on camera at least for a few minutes a day. That is going to make a huge difference in the months to come. 
Step number six is start doing some keyword research. Now you've got all these ideas, you've got all these product ideas, all these content ideas. What you wanna do is figure out what are people actually looking for? What are people actually searching for? So you can do that via keyword research. Now I use a tool called SEM Rush, which I think is like $130 a month, but it comes with a trial. If you don't wanna pay that $130 a month, which I understand is a lot of money, what I would do is sign up for the trial and do all of your keyword research ahead of time. Look at all of your content ideas, look at all of your product names, and start putting those keywords into the software. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna come back and tell you how many people are searching for it, how hard it's going to be to rank for it, how interested people are in this topic. And that's gonna allow you to prioritize which types of content you put out there first. The keyword research you do in SEM Rush for Google also has some indirect translation to Google. Chances are if people are searching for it on Google and it's popular, they're also going to be searching for it on YouTube. But I use a second tool called VidIQ, which I think I pay like 10 bucks a month for, specifically for YouTube keyword research. So if I've got a content idea, I'll search for the main keyword in VidIQ. I will see how many people are searching for that term. But what I'm really looking for is seeing if there is another related term that more people are searching for. Sometimes you've got the right idea, you just have to change the language a little bit to hit the biggest audience possible. And so vidIQ is a pretty inexpensive way to do research for YouTube videos. Step number seven, start creating content. I would focus first on five pillar posts. These are the posts where if someone shows up on your new website or your new YouTube channel, if these are the only five things there, they are super useful, super helpful, and things that make people say, oh yeah, this is great. I wanna see more from this person. The way you're gonna figure out what these posts are is kind of a combination of your own intuition as well as your keyword research. So getting a sense of what's popular, what are you interested in, what do other people seem to be interested in in your research, as well as looking at the numbers within your keyword research to make sure that the search numbers are actually backing up your guesses. If you're not entirely sure where to start, a great way to start would be to find five products within that niche within a niche and do product reviews of all of them. From there, you can take the ones that are most directly related and do comparison posts. You can then also do your best of posts. So this is the best one overall. This is one I would stay away from. This is the best budget option. This is the best luxury option. Assign categories for each one to make it easier for people to figure out what is best for them based on their needs. Once you've got that base, you can start expanding your content out from there. Continue to focus on that niche within a niche, but you can start throwing in content from another niche within a niche. And so you can start dabbling to see what are people resonating with? What are people interested in? So I started with golf rangefinders, but as I started doing golf simulator content, very quickly it became clear people People were more interested in my simulator content than my rangefinder content. So I started doing more of that. And then golf shoes. I threw a few golf shoe reviews out there. Those did well. So I started expanding that. So what you can do is as you're establishing your first niche within a niche, you can start throwing different types of content in different niches out there to see what sticks, see what people seem to resonate with, and that can help dictate where you move moving forward. Number eight is simple. Come up with a strict content posting schedule. This is where most people fail and they fall off. They get really excited, they post a few things, and then they let it get pushed to the side. If you're serious about this, if you wanna build that six-figure income, you gotta take it seriously. You've gotta treat this like a job, like it is your business. This isn't just a side hustle. You gotta take this thing seriously. So figure out what your content posting schedule is going to be for the next six months. Maybe it's Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Maybe it's a video on Monday and a blog post on Wednesday. Whatever it is, come up with that schedule, publicize that schedule, stick to it ruthlessly so that people can start to expect that and start searching out your content around the posting time. Doing this is not only gonna make it easier to get people to keep coming back for your content, it's also gonna give you some hard boundaries to make sure that you're not slacking and you're continuing to build forward momentum. Step nine, decide on a call to action. This is something you might not think about or you might overlook. But one of the most important things you can do within your content is give people something to do next. So if it's a product review, it may be as simple as click this link and buy this product. But you should have a more overarching call to action across your entire business that's going to allow you to start building an asset. The best asset, in my opinion, to start building is an email list. Google algorithms can change, social media algorithms can change, but when you've got that email list, it's something you own. So if everything else gets blown up, if you've got that list of people that have said, hey, I'm interested in what you're doing, you still have a way to get a hold of them. A less doomsday-like scenario is as you build up that list, every time you come out with a new piece of content, you can email the list about the content to give it a little kickstart. So if you're trying to get some eyeballs on a YouTube video, boom, email your list. Those are the people that are most likely to watch it to boost the YouTube metrics, which is 
going to make it more likely for it to hit the algorithm and have YouTube push it out to more people. I have found an email list to be the single most beneficial, most profitable thing that I've had in any of my niche businesses, and I recommend you start building it right away. So what's the call to action? You've got to find something compelling enough to get someone to want to give you their email address. Some people are going to like your content enough. They're just like, cool, get me on the newsletter. I want to hear it. You know, I want to know about everything you put out. Most people are going to need a little more convincing. So I think you should come up with a lead magnet, something that's going to help them or give them something useful in exchange for their email address. So for my site Location Rebel, I've got a free six day email course that walks you through how to build a sustainable freelance writing business. I've had tens of thousands of people opt up for that. People sign up, they get the first lesson immediately. It takes them through six days of super helpful content. And then at the end, there's a little bit of a pitch for Location Rebel Academy. So not only are people getting on my email list, but then it's also a chance to take someone who's very engaged and potentially make a sale. This is a business after all. One of the ways this is working really well is with my quizzes on Breaking 80. So let's say you end up on that best golf rangefinders post. You're still not sure which one is right for you. I've got an offer that says, hey, take this 30 second quiz, you answer five questions, and I'm going to make my best recommendation based on your specific needs. Take the quiz, enter in your email address, I send you the results. Over the last six months, my email list has quadrupled on Breaking 80, all because of four quizzes. So that's super powerful. I'm giving someone genuinely useful information. I spent a ton of time making these quizzes to make sure all the logic made sense and that the recommendations were actually going to be useful. So I get them on my email list. They get pointed in the right direction. They can then go read the reviews, get more information around that specific product. And if all goes well, they're going to buy that product. I'm going to get a commission and they're going to get a product that they're really happy with. So think about what your call to action is. Almost every single one of my videos, almost every single one of my blog posts has a call to action beyond just click the link and buy the product. I'm working to build my email list and finding a good way to do that is going to be paramount. So as you're getting going, think about what you could offer that would be valuable. Maybe it's a checklist, maybe it's a cheat sheet, maybe it's a quiz, maybe it's a course, whatever it is, figure out what that is and start working on it because you want to get that live as quickly as possible. We're almost done here, I promise. Step number 10, research future relationships. One of the absolute best ways to grow within a niche site is to get active within the niche, within the industry. Who are the people that are out there that are doing reviews? Who are the people out there starting businesses in this industry? Who are the people you should be talking to and getting in front of and building relationships with? You're not doing this in a vacuum. Everybody out there is a real person. So the more relationships you can build within your industry quickly, the better your chances of having success are quickly. With my golf site, I got to know the person who was in charge of social media at Golf Digest. And over the course of a few years, they shared a whole bunch of my Instagram photos on the Golf Digest Instagram account. Every time that happened, I got 200, 300 new followers over to my Instagram account. And guess what a bunch of them did? They clicked over, they found the website, they got on my email list, they became regular readers. So spend the time to figure out who are the people you want to get to know, and then once you've established who those people are, figure out how you can help them. Nobody wants you just coming out asking for handouts, asking for things. But if you can find a way to be genuinely useful for those people, you're going to be able to build the relationships quicker, and that's going to help you grow quicker in the process. And finally, last step, start publishing. Start figuring out what works. Start figuring out what people are excited about. The stuff people are excited about, do more. The stuff that gets crickets and doesn't do anything, do less of. Keep in mind, as you're getting going, it's going to take some time to get traction. It's going to take months to really get going. So if something doesn't take off right away, don't worry about it. The chances are nothing's going to take off right away. But again, going back to video, one of the keys to this is you can have a video that doesn't do anything, and then all of a sudden, two months, three months, a year down the line, something clicks and Google says, oh, we like this video, and they start pushing it out. I recently had a video I did a year and a half ago about the best golf resorts you've never heard of. All of a sudden, it started getting 2,000 views a day out of nowhere. And so as you are consistently putting out more content, as you are consistently becoming an expert and becoming top of mind, you're going to find these algorithms, whether they're YouTube, whether they're search, they're going to start working in your favor. And that's going to start sending people to your site. That's going to allow you to start making money. That's how you're going to grow this thing. It's a lot of work up front. It's a lot of work to figure out how to get good on camera. It's a lot of work to figure out how to write these blog posts. But if you take the time to do it, if you take the time to establish that expertise, you are going to have the potential for a six-figure business that is going to change your life. I've been doing this for a long time, and every year things happen where I'm just like, 
I can't believe I get to do this. I can't believe this worked. I can't believe these opportunities. And it was all because I started. So start. If you follow this process exactly, I promise you, you will have some element of success. It may not be a ton of success right away, but you will make at least some money. You will build some very relevant skills. You will start to establish yourself in your industry. And all of those can be beneficial to your future, regardless of the long-term success of this particular brand. Before we end, if you still have more, I know there's gonna be a handful of questions that get asked all the time, so I'm just gonna do a quick FAQ. How do you get products to review? First, I would recommend starting with products you already have and like. Do that because those are gonna be the products you're most excited about, the ones you're most knowledgeable about, and it's going to be easier to get going with those. Second, this is kind of shady, but you can buy something online, review it, and then return it. I don't recommend you make a habit out of this, but if there are a couple products that you really wanna review, Get them, review them, photograph them, get video B-roll, get all the photographs, and if you have to return them, you can do that as well. But the chances are, if you do a good job with your content, you're gonna be able to pay for that thing you bought pretty quickly with the content. Finally, once you've got some content to show, once you've built your brand, once you've got something for people to see, you can start reaching out to companies and asking if they would be willing to send you something for review. Sometimes you can keep it, sometimes you can't. But you'd be surprised, even if your site is really small, if you've focused on that niche well enough, then you're gonna find brands are like, oh, this is exactly the type of person we want to review our product. The person that's specializing in the thing that we create. So don't be shy about reaching out. If you do decide to join Location Rebel Academy, another course we have in there is all about how to send emails that get positive responses. How do you send an email to these companies that's gonna get them to reply? More importantly, get them to reply and say, yes, here you go, we will send you this thing. We have an entire copywriting course around creating this specific type of email, which is one of the most overlooked yet valuable skills I have ever learned. If you can send a persuasive email that gets opened and gets people to say yes, man, you are going to have so many opportunities in life. How much can you expect to make with an affiliate commission? It can be anywhere from 3% to 70% and everywhere in between. If it's on Amazon, you can expect to make 3%. If it is a bigger retailer specializing in a specific type of product, then you can expect to make maybe five to 10%. If it's a small company only selling a handful of products, usually you can expect to start out around 10% and as you start selling more, you might be able to bump that up to you know 20%-ish. If there's an information product that has less hard costs, you can expect to make anywhere from like 20 to 50%. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of an idea of what you can potentially make for each affiliate sale. What type of products should you review? So personally, my general recommendation is high price, low volume in industries where people are excited to spend money. It's a lot easier for me to sell one $3,000 launch monitor where I make a $300 commission as opposed to selling $130 t-shirts where I'm making three bucks a piece. I'd rather go high price, low volume. And then like I just said, an industry where people are excited to spend money. Golf? Golf has been great because it's an industry where people generally have money, but more importantly, they love to spend it on golf. They love to go out and buy new $600 drivers or $3,000 golf simulators. Travel, photography, cooking. There's all sorts of industries like that. So find the one that intersects with you and what you like and go from there. So there you go. We're going to end this video now because it's already probably the longest YouTube video I've ever made. But if you got some value out of this, maybe consider hitting subscribe, thumbs up, notification bell, do all the things, drop a comment below. If you have any questions, I've been doing this for over a decade. I would love to help you. Drop a comment below. I will help get you the answers you need as you are getting going. And uh, if you sign up for our email list, we have a free six day course all about how to build a system sustainable online business. If a niche site is not for you, you just need to make money as quickly and as easily as possible, then this course is going to help you get there. With that, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for getting this far. I know it's been a long one, but I hope you got a tremendous amount of value out of it. And I'll see you on the next video. Peace.